Now, there's been a play on words yes. with the word native. Now, when children of the day open up their school books and they say, this is a native, they're not looking at someone that look like you and I are correct. That's right, that's right. So there's been a play with the word native. You know, there's been a play with the word um, America. Who's American, who's not American. There's a play with the word, you know, when you talk about jurisdiction here, you have Native American, then you have American. They, 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 there's just plays going on with, there's different movements on the board with the different language that appeared. Now you said something that jumped out to me. You, you spoke about um, the, you were speaking about, oh my gosh, the um, land. Yes. You was talking about the land. Okay. Now how the land, the understanding that you are having a touch in this claim to the land from the earth. Now people today, they're looking at this. They say, okay, you're talking about a treaty of, oh, you're talking about a treaty of 1700s, 1800s, even 19, early 1900. How does this apply today where you have the people that are natives, autochthonous, indigenous to the land? How does this apply to the people today for them to have a true understanding of their right of self-determination, of their right to proclaim whom, who they are without a doubt or contradiction, without being forced into racial assimilation of racial constructs such as black Negro color, which, is, which has taken us out of the kinship of our inheritance of being able to claim our birthright inheritance to the land. How, do, how does this affect each and every one of us today? All right, well, we want to make it very clear that there's no treaty on the world. There's no treaty that the Moors ever enter into with any European powers that gives Moors the right to make an autochthonous claim. No treaty does that. So we're going to put the treaties to the side. We talk about autochthonous claim rising from the earth. No treaty does that. I mean, when, if Moors make an autochthonous claim based on treaty, they're giving up their birthright. Please hear me. If you point to any treaty and make an autochthonous claim based on treaty, that means you're making a autochthonous claim based on a treaty with France, a treaty with England, the treaty with the Netherlands, Sardinia, Great Britain, United States. That's improper. That's not well settled. An autochthonous claim, 10,000 years. 20,000 years, 30, let's go by 40,000. What is your 10,000 to your 400? So let's go to 17, <laughs> let's go to the 1744 Lancaster. Lancaster Treaty. Great Britain and the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee Confederation convened in Lancaster. Great Britain poking her chest out. Three hundred years. They were peacocking. <laughs> We've been here for three hundred years. Well, what does three hundred years have to do with rising from the earth? That's an autochthonous claim. Checkmate. They said three hundred years. Mm -hmm. We say rise from the earth. That's an autochthonous claim. So they did not make a claim based on any treaty to land. The autochthonous claim. I just gave you something that's well settled. A treaty. I want to add to that, Shem.
Professor Abdullah is right because he's going back. And remember that that was a convention because a sovereign met another sovereign to dispute of land. And the Air Corps was letting Great Britain know that you can't be owners of any land. So we're looking at a jurisdictional thing here and we're looking at a, a, a territorial claim here. Great Britain made a claim that they was deeded. They talk about deeds because it was an Inico. The Inico, I believe, in the 15th century was deeding land. Ninicos were part, a tribe part of the Lenanapes. And the Iroquois position was this. A subject or indentured servant cannot enter to a treaty or make any decisions about the land. Even the, the land that they live, even though they consider as a nation, but their nation is servant to and subject to their, their kinsmen, their cousins, their brothers, sisters. By being in that capacity and denture to your, your brothers, now they gotta go back to the Torah. You know good and well in the Torah, you was indentured servant to your brother or someone else, you didn't have a right to make decisions even on your own land. If that party came on and you became a denture servant and they worked your land and they gave you the things you need, there was a, a period, a contract period. And you could not do as you will with your own affairs under that contract. Then the Jubilee kicked in a new beginning. See, you remember, you remember, you gotta, you gotta go back to our, you gotta go back to Drew Prudence here, positive law. So, when you make a claim that I am a direct kinsmanship, descent heir of ancient people that inhabit this land for about, let's say, let's say, let's say to go back and say for the last forty thousand years, and you've been here. You come off a boat across the water and met with a group, a tribe down here, and you have been doing agreements in our land. And you want to take this agreement and say that you got sovereign power as you are supreme equal with us. Principle law does not permit that. Does not permit because a sovereign cannot enter into agreements. A servant doesn't have an equal standard as his supreme and superiors. So the treaties, the air corps, acknowledge the treaties to be void. Now, Shem, does a well-settled fear, right? And this well-settled fear has been, it became like a, a, a ball of chain. It became first a, a ball of chain on a physical body where uh, our people were, became prisoners of war placed in for, forced servitudes. Now there were migrations of people, not, not the transatlantic slave trade. We'll, we'll get into that we can dissect that as well at a later time. There was some migration of some that was moved from one territorial to another territory and that's mixing up, mixing the people up to confuse you of your area. Cause you got to remember our people, our, 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 our ancestors were pneumatic. They, they went throughout the entire earth plane and settled throughout the earth. So there was, it was not anything for our ancestors to one moment be in one territory in another territory. And then once that territory no longer was conducive for their survival of life uh, for their generation, they were able to just move to another regional territory. And sometimes they may have to go into their kinfolks territory for to be able to sustain life because it may have had better soil content and things of that a nature uh, exactly yes. so you know we always migrated you know that was a part of what we did then and what we also do today we continue to migrate and move for better areas of improvement so with that being said you know as we continue along the path of understanding and towards enlightenment our people, it has moved from a physical bondage to a mental bondage, right? And in that mental bondage, it has become a, a fear factor of this story of 
they they the claim has never been made that they're not from this land mass. The claim has never been made. It's always been made that they are not from here. Somehow we overlooked that. And there's this well set of fear that we were enslaved. We became prisoners of war over commerce. Let's look at it like that. But after the war is over, there there's laws, there's law, you know, laws within war where you can no longer keep a person in bondage for perpetuity. That's a violation of nature. That's a violation of nature's law. Now keep in mind, civilization, cultural norms are based off nature's law. That's where it's derived from. So when these things occur, our people have settled into the fear of not coming back to the ancient customs and practices, and we have assembled into our oppressor's way of moral code statutes ordinance. And now it gets to the point where you don't even see and understand where your fear, your misery is not outweighing your fear. So you rather stay, you rather stay miserable as well as not understand. And then we have what we call so-called so-called, I, I say leader guys and, and girls who have become the great gatekeepers of our oppressors who will go and work within the foreign jurisdictional occupational zone to keep the, the rules of bay. And now people are really in a state of perpetual fear and not understanding that your sovereignty is in divinity. It's not based in a treaty. It's not based in a statute. It's not based in a um, United Nations rights of declarations of, of, uh, of all that stuff. It's not based in organizational states, uh, rights of a child. It's not based in that. Your sovereignty is based in divinity. Your ability to move like the wind, your ability to move like the water, your ability to be strong like within the earth. That's where your sovereignty is derived from. And until our people come to an understanding that we would never be a, a people that would rise up and get the assistance of the creator because we are, we are trapped into someone else's ideology of who we should be and what we should be. Could you elaborate on that just a little bit? You know, one of one of the great examples of overthrowing a people without war, because you can never point to the Moors being beat in war by Albion's or Maganated Moors. There have been wars, but there have been peace treaties. But there's a new war that's been waged, and and like Professor Abdullah said, is 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 ways to a denotation and connotation in language and how that is waged. I'm going to give you a prime example. In Granada, when the Moors in Granada followed the doctrine of Muhammadism as a seer, the prophet as a seer, the seer book, the Quran ruled. It's very, it's, it, it, it ruled. The moment that Queen Isabella and the Pope came up with a plan to, see so you have to learn language, to convert the people, to give over their political allegiance to Catholic faith that's disguised as under the form of Christianity. Catholicism is a doctrine. Christianity is divinity. They disguise it. The moment that they converted the people, the people gave over their allegiance to the new seer, which is the Pope, the Catholic magistrate. When that happened, in the, in the power structure of the nation, there became a division. 70% became Catholic. 30% was Muhammad followers. So the Muhammad followers that had the ball and chain of ruling fists agreed before the nation go to a civil war 
they allowed to enter into a treaty. And Abdullah, you can break the treaty down more than I bet it. I can. The, the, the Granada Treaty at King Isabella and the Pope and how they entered, but they, they made a treaty to protect their, even though you got Mohammedism and you got Catholic, they still made an agreement to protect the native more called cultural rights, possession rights, a talking his claim to the land. That was protected. See, in that treaty, that right to territorial sovereignty was protected. And that's what uh, you need to go on and read the Granada Treaty and read a history on it, and you'll see what I'm saying. 14, 14 what? 92. 92, yes. Yeah, 1492. Yes. Gr Treaty of Granada. Yes. Yeah, November 25th, 1491. It was signed by Abu Muhammad and put into force in 14, January 1492. Now, before we get into the Treaty of uh, Paris of 1783, I just have a thought-provoking question. How is it that the autochthonous native indiv indigenous of the entire earth have a well-settled problem and fear of claiming their divinity, divine sovereignty, whereas you have ones that have proclaimed their sovereignty through the doctrine of what is it, Judaism, Judaism, a Jewish, an Amish, a Mennonite. But keep in mind, that claim is also based on divinity as well. It's, ba it's still based on divinity. So where is this well-settled fear continue to hover and perpetuate itself within the people that are autogenous, native, indigenous, classified, misnomered as black, negro, colored. Abdullah, I want you to take that. It's called constructive language. Thank you. Constructive language. We have pastors. There are thousands of churches in our communities. The South is called the belt, Bible Belt. Why? The South alone. I remember being, especially when I was in Chicago, let me talk Chicago, and we was on, what's the guy who was trying, the, the one who was killed, the boy, little boy came from the south to Chicago, Emmett Till, Emmett Till Boulevard. And um, in a 10 block radius, I counted, a 10 block radius, you know, I counted, 20 churches like you could actually walk the 10 blocks these churches said because i'm i gotta say i have to say it because you I, in order to answer the question i gotta be specific it's the churches that that well settled fear the lack of knowledge of who we are. So we have churches and schools, two institutions that in all our communities, in all of our communities, we have churches and schools. Those, inst those two institutions are the institutions that maintain and facilitate our mental oppression. Those two churches and schools, I have to name them, I have to say it, because in order to answer the question, okay. I have to identify the institutions, churches and schools. It's very important. What will liberate our people? Proper guidance. They need a lighthouse. They need a lighthouse. The lighthouse is the knowledge of the galactic cross. The lighthouse is the knowledge of Christianity in its original intent and application. The lighthouse is the knowledge of your nationality, your history, your culture, your philosophy, these treaty protection. The lighthouse, without that, the fear will be maintained because they have nothing to point to. They, you know, ooh, 
because they're looking at the 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 they're looking at the, the United States as being the authority. They look at the Europeans as being the authority. You know, that's where the fear comes from, the lack of knowledge. That's it. The fear comes from the lack of knowledge of their nation, our nationality, our history, our culture, our philosophy, our holidays, our folkways, our mores. That's where the fear comes from. How do you instill the confidence? Just reverse it. Just give them the knowledge of their net Moorish nationality, their history, the culture, the philosophy, Jewish prudence, Moorish you know, treaty protection. That's that's it. It's not. It's nothing. It's not complicated. It's not something to you know that's that's so complicated. Just reverse it. So we need institutions of learning. We need. All right, my bad. <laughs> We need more I, institutions. I said we have one, the Academy, Academy of Providence. Providence. <laughs> more institutions yes. of learning. More literature. More teachers. Yes. More jurists. More scholars. We have very few scholars in our communities. I'm not talking about mm. more classified Negro color black with these PhDs. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about, all right, let me kick me out. Please, please I, quantify I, I said, that. I had to qualify yeah, that. You know. I said we, are, we have very little scholars in our communities. Let me qualify that. All these HBCUs, scholars don't come out of them. All these HBCUs, no scholars come out of that. Those colleges, none. They don't come out of that. You cannot say Abdullah. Can I say to me that scholars come out of HBCUs and they was there for four years and they're still saying they're black. Once I hear that, I don't have to hear anything else. I don't have to hear anything else. If they're saying you're, they're black, we're black, they cannot liberate our people. I don't care divinity degree. History degree, sociology degree, PhD, LLD, jurisprudence, whatever D with DJD. If they're saying we're black, what did Barack Obama say when he was on Tom Joyner? He said he's not black. Tom, Barack Obama, when he was on Tom Joyner, his first term, after he got elected his first term, he was on Tom Joyner's morning show. Tom Joyner introduced Barack Obama as the first black president of the United States. Tom Barack Obama said, black. What did he say? He said, I'm not black. I'm not black. Black is a fiction, fiction. in law. Yes. He Google it. Now, YouTube of it. course, there. that went over people's head. These people from HBCUs with these master's degrees, PhDs, JDs, so-called scholars, a nerve of Barack Obama. A nerve of Barack Obama. These HBCU quote-unquote scholars in our communities a nerve of Barack Obama. You know, you know what came to mind. I I just have to say it, Cornell West, because he was one of the main peacockers against of course, that that's what I, said. I he, know I, he, he is. Let me say his name. <laughs> Cornell West. Say it again. Oh my God, he say was it again. Cornell West. Oh, thank you. He was peacocking against he that won, statement. He won, he won, he's, so he's, he's, what is he now? Right. He's a professor at what? Princeton University. Right, and he peacocked against that a statement so for hard. Obama. That's why I laugh. He peacocked so hard. I swear, so I, I was shocked. Right, because you you claim to be a professor at one of the chartered schools of the crown, Princeton, let's call it what it is. It is a private elemosinary, which means gift school of the crown. Look it up. He's a professor there, tenured, and he almost blew a gasket for Barack spilling a secret. So which, what does that make him? A gatekeeper for the oppressor. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just call it what it is. And we have a lot of gatekeepers in Congress. 
You have a lot of gatekeepers in the Senate. You have a lot of gatekeepers in your state and local government. You have a lot of gatekeepers in the schools and the churches. They're all around you. Anytime you rise to the level of a doctorate degree, see the problem with us, like Professor Abdullah say, the reason why we stay under fear is because we put people, we put people up as statues, trophies. And they forerunner, they did this, and then we praise them. We look at the see, see but when I look, when I look at their whole life, their writings and stuff, I can never catch them saying treaties, saying this our land, saying who we are, saying we these ancient people, saying that this what this ancient land is. And I don't want to say no doctor's name, because there's a lot of them they call scholars, but I have not ever seen them ever talk about government that this and that so they just talk alone for the money right they got to continue to line their pocket up it becomes it. it becomes the their picture. way of life they write they write these wonderful um our cultural archaeological books anthropology books they write these wonderful lit bodies of literature they help unlock just you can kind of just say it doesn't unlock anything. It kind of like, you know how you have the wonder pains and you can like just break a hole out of it and just kind of see through a little bit better if it was all dusty. Let's just say we're just breaking a little hole out of the wonder pain so we can just see a little bit farther. So they write these wonder cultural anthropology books, but if you dissect the language of that, you would immediately stop in your tracks. Now, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater because sometimes you can take the misplacement of the word, place the proper word in its place, and then it'll have a better reading. That's the only way sometimes I can read some of the books because the language is totally screwed. Yes. The yes. language is totally screwed. Let me, let me say this point. Moors and Masonry. I didn't use any, there's no African, American, Negro, colored, black scholars that I've referenced in Moors and Masonry. I, did, I mean, I'm saying, all right, we've been studying treaties and conventions and mm -hmm. acts and covenants. I mean, where are, are, what African, Negro, black, colored scholar that we use? To reference to like for our literature, like no, you, no. I'm, I'm saying, so like we don't even use like who do we point to that we even use? You know, now Jay Rogers. All right, I'll use like Jay Rogers is one of the few. Jay Rogers, Joy Which Rogers, Nature, Na Nature. You mm -hmm. have um, Eric Snowden. Uh, Snowden. Yeah. Uh, you got Snowden, mm -hmm. Jay Rogers. Uh, just a few others. I remember Sir, well, he, no, I remember Sir's not because the class is black. There's, those are two that I can. What about Pimente? Hmm? What about Pimente? What is his name? No, he's a, he's more, that conscious more. He's a Jose Pimente Bay is a conscious more. Okay. So he's, no, yeah. Just those two. Oh, you said that, of that category, of yes. the classification category. Okay, yes. okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, so let me say this, Shem. There's nothing wrong we're us because we are pointing to our ancestors as statue of so the problem is that our people are not those people are, are not 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 lighthouses all right I mean shim Tamara mm -hmm. aren't we want the people to look to the academy of providence i'm not just we want people to look to the academy of providence as mm -hmm. a lighthouse i mean let's, let's be real yeah, absolutely all right so it's a pointer right it's a pointer so it's the, not the um the answer to the question because the academy of providence mission let, let's just read that abdullah let's just yes. read that let's read the academy of providence mission and the reason why i'm saying that because I know a lot, there's a lot of parroting that goes on in, in studies. And then people do not have the depth, the understanding of, of, of how things are derived. And um, I don't have my glasses on, but I'm going to make it through. 
um, how things are derived and come to. So I'm going to go to the About Us page. Go to academyofprovidence.org. I'm going to go to the Pro About Us page. 